Hi everyone, welcome to Love Good Kitchen. I'm Matthew, and I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to my channel. This is gonna be really fun. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and then I certainly hope that you subscribe and hit that bell so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Today, we are going to be making one of my all-time favorite things, pie crust. Pie is probably my number one absolute favorite dessert um, because I love pastry, but also because it's so versatile. I don't really see how you could not like pie because pie can be a chocolatey thing, it can be a fruit thing, it can be filled with nuts, it can be an ice cream pie, it can be a cookie pie, it can be pretty much anything. So I love pie. And we're going to be making, today we're going to be doing uh, my favorite recipe for pie crust. And I know this can be a hot topic. Everybody has their favorite. I've spent a lot of time exploring many different versions of pie crust. Uh, you name it, I've tried them all. Uh, even uh, my grandmother's recipe, which she made excellent pie. Um, but I've also tried all the greats, Ina, Paula Deen, the Pioneer Woman, you name it, I've tried it, and I have landed on this as my favorite. Um, and I know to some it's gonna be a little weird because it's an oil pie crust. It doesn't use any butter. Um, and the reason why I say that this is my favorite is because uh, of three things. Number one is the taste. You know, crusts that use butter, they taste really good but they can be hard to work with depending on if it's a humid day, if it's raining, did you refrigerate it long enough before you rolled it out? Um, did you keep the butter cold enough? On and on and on. Uh, so there can be some texture issues. And then um, crusts that use uh, lard or use uh, shortening have a brilliant texture, but the taste is kind of meh. Um, and then there are of course recipes that combine the two I haven't had a ton of luck with any of those, but I stumbled upon this one, and this recipe came from a friend of a friend's mother, um, and I did have to adapt it a little bit uh, to suit my taste and also uh, for a standard size, because uh, the recipe that I received was for an 8-inch pie, and I actually do have an 8-inch pie plate. Um, but I don't use it super often because it's on the small side for a pie. And you know, if you're a big eater and you love pie, um, an eight inch pie just isn't gonna cut it. <laughs> so um, that's where this recipe came from. But this recipe is also vegan. This pie crust is vegan. And I didn't set out for that to be a thing. Um, that just happens to be how it is um, because it does involve um, only oil and salt flour and water, and that's about it. Um, I should also add that if you want to make it gluten-free, I have tried this before using almond flour um, and the rest of it being the same. You may have to um, switch up your water, your, the amount of water that you use, uh, depending on how dry your almond flour is because you don't want it to be too soupy, but you don't want it to be too crumbly. Um, so if you are going that route, um, just kind of keep your eyes peeled on that as you go and form the actual dough there at the end so that you don't end up with it too wet or too dry. But I'm going to bring you along and show you how I put together my favorite pie crust. And I will put the recipe uh, in the description box below so you can check it out. You don't have to worry about uh, scrambling for uh, paper and pencil if you even use paper and a pencil anymore a lot of people don't anyway here in my bowl I have two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour now this will make one nine inch pie crust so if you're doing a double crust pie like you might for a traditional apple pie or a cherry pie or something like that then obviously you'll want to double this recipe but I personally would recommend um, not do it doubling the batch and then sort of trying to cut it in half because it makes it too much and too big to incorporate all together as you're adding the water you'll see in a second um, so i would recommend doing 
one, you can do it in the same bowl, do one, and then when you need that top crust, just do it again. You'll have all the stuff out that you need, um, and then just whip out that uh, top crust. But I've got two and a quarter cups of flour, and to that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Now, I like to use table salt instead of kosher salt, because the kosher for this recipe, it's they're, of course, larger granules, and it just doesn't kind of disperse the way I want it to. So I just like to use regular table salt. I'm gonna take a whisk and I just kind of whisk it together to make sure that it's mixed around before I get to the next step. All right, so I think that's pretty well mixed. Set that aside. Oh, I only did one of my reasons for this pie crust. So um, taste is one reason. Um, it tastes so good. I don't want to say it's like a cracker crust because it's not, but it almost, it's leaning in that direction, which is delicious with any desserts or sweet flavors because it brings it out. Um, you can also use this and it's marvelous with um, like chicken pot pie or a quiche or, or something savory. So taste is one. Number two um, is texture. Wonderful texture. It's flaky, but it doesn't just disintegrate and fall apart. Um, so that's another thing. And then the third thing, which might be the best thing, is the workability. It's so easy. You don't have to worry about chilling it before you roll it out. Um, if you happen to break a piece or you get a tear, it doesn't matter. You can just patch it up and no one uh, will ever know. I know people say that all the time about other pie crusts that involve butter or butter shortening, etc. They're like, oh, it's fine. You can just patch it together. No, you can't. Or you can but it's definitely noticeable. This recipe, you can, no one's gonna notice. It's easy to work with. You don't have to worry about it staying cold. Um, you can shape it. Uh, you can actually shape it right in your pie plate if you don't wanna roll it out. We are gonna roll it out today, but. So those three things combined make this my favorite. All right, I didn't wanna forget that. So we got those out there. Two hour, two and a quarter cups of flour and a teaspoon of salt that we've whisked together. I have here two-thirds cup of oil. This is canola oil. You can use whatever oil you want. However, if you're making a dessert pie, like a fruit pie or um, like a chocolate pie, I would not recommend using um, an olive oil or like peanut oil or an oil that has a strong flavor because it's going to come through in the crust and that might be a little weird with your other ingredients. Now, if you're making a chicken pot pie, or something like that that's savory, then go right ahead and use your olive oil or your, your strongly flavored oil. Probably it would be very good. So two-thirds cup of, this is canola oil. I'm just gonna pour that in. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we're gonna mix this together my favorite tool for this is a good old fork. I've tried a whisk. You don't need a pastry blender. Um, a spoon isn't going to do it. The best thing is a fork. And I'm just going to run this around almost like you're folding it in. I don't know if you can see from that angle, but I'm just taking this fork and I'm working the oil through the flour and the salt. And what you're aiming to do is to, sorry, I'm gonna use this word. Some of you hate this word, but I'm, I'm trying to moisten all of the flour bits so that we don't have any super dry clumps. That's another reason why I like the fork because you can kind of use the tines of the fork to squish it through like that. Can you see? And just kind of get it moistened. Get it wet. All right. There, that's good. Now, the next thing I'm going to recommend is that you don't do this in a teeny tiny bowl. You could. I mean, that's not a lot of material. But you want to use a big enough bowl that it can kind of spread out a little bit because of the next step. So just take your, your fork and kind of squish it around a little bit so that it's more even on the bottom of your bowl because the next step 
Um, I have some ice water. This is just a little cup of water and I put a couple ice cubes in it a few minutes ago. Um, we're gonna put in three or four tablespoons of the ice water. I'm just gonna kinda go like that. I'm gonna do three and then we're gonna see how it's looking. I don't know, I'm not a, a food chemist or scientist. I don't know why this happens. Sometimes I need that fourth tablespoon of water. Sometimes I don't. So I'm just taking my fork and I'm smushing it all around. My ice cubes are jingling. I'm gonna move you over there. And again, you can use the tines of the fork to kind of press and squish and smush and now what you're aiming to do is obviously you don't want any wet spots or puddles of the water but you want to incorporate the water throughout when the water hits the the other ingredients in the dough it kind of lightens it in color i don't know if you can see that and what you want to do is smush it through so that you don't have any of those uneven spots and i have found that by doing that it makes it even easier to roll out and shape into your pie pan. So I'm just kind of smushing it. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. You don't have to work it to death. That's the other th great thing about this pie crust is that um, if you did decide to squish it to death and you sat here and you just banged it out for 15 minutes with that fork, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be fine. You cannot do that with a butter crust. Okay, so I have a couple sheets of wax paper. And I only really use this one for a lot. Then I'm gonna put one sheet down and then I'm just gonna turn this out of the bowl onto that first sheet of wax paper. And doop, there we go. I don't want to leave any pie crust goodness here in the bowl. All right, get it off the fork there. And then, that. I just use my hands. My hands are clean. I just washed them before I started this video. I'm just going to use my hands to shape it into a circle, a disc. That looks about good in the center of your wax paper. And then you take the other sheet, just put it on top, and it's just regular old wax paper you get at the grocery store or you probably have it everywhere now. And then I'm gonna use my rolling pin to roll it out. Now, I know the famous chefs and bakers, they have their techniques of uh, shifting it so that you're rolling it in different directions each time. Um, that doesn't work for me, especially not with the wax paper situation. So what I do is I just use my rolling pin and I roll away from the center and I just keep switching up the direction. That way it keeps the circle in an even shape and you're not with a lopsided disc. But here's another thing. Um, when I say that this is for a nine inch pie, that means that's the measurement of my pie plate. And if you've ever wondered what the difference is, there are different depths of pie plate. There are the deep dish kind, um, which you need to increase your um, pie crust or your pie in general recipe to use, or you need a recipe that's specifically for a deep dish. Um, because if not, and you use a deep dish pan, um, it's just not gonna fill it and the crust is gonna be weird. Um, so that's something to know. But also, they measure uh, pie plates from the inner rim to the other inner rim. Sort of that, that measurement there. Um, so it's not from the outer edge, or it's not the bottom surface. It's from the rim to rim. So if you are making a 9-inch pie, you actually need to roll your crust circle out a little bit larger than that. I would say at least 10 inches so that you have some to work with to come up and then you're, you can trim off any excess you have. But if you don't have enough, then that's a problem. Then you're not gonna have enough to 
either crimp or bring up the sides enough. So we're going to keep on rolling this out. I have another pet peeve with pie crust recipes more so than pie in general. And that is, some of these recipes say roll it out to a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch. I don't know what planet these people are on, but have you ever taken a ruler and actually measured how much a quarter of an inch is or an eighth of an inch? It's really tiny. That is so thin. Who wants a piece of pie with like a paper thin piece of crust on the bottom? Not to mention, it then makes it more difficult to get out of the pie plate or you have to be really gentle with it. Who needs it? I love crust. Otherwise, I wouldn't be eating pie. So give me a little crust. I'm not saying I need like an inch and a half crust on the bottom, but you feel me? How do you feel about pie crust? I have strong feelings about pie, apparently. All right. So, and then I just take my pie plate and I set it on there so I can kind of see, guesstimate. That looks pretty good. So I think we're good with the rolling. I'll set that up here. So now we just take this top sheet of wax paper and we peel it off, set that over here. And then there are various ways that you can do this too. Um, I'm going to invert this pie plate and put it, center it so that it's in the middle. And then I'm just going to lift up my wax paper and I'm going to flip it over. And then if you take the two ends of the wax paper and you kind of pull it taut and then, um, you need to help this little guy a little bit. There we go. Pull it taut and then just peel it back. It'll come right off. Now see that ripped a little bit there. It doesn't matter because this is an amazing pie crust. And you can put it back, you can fix it, and no one's ever gonna know, like for real. Now, another thing that I've heard other bakers say if they're doing this type of pie crust is that you can't reuse the wax paper. Why? You can, I do, it's fine. I don't know if they're doing something different to their wax paper and they're unable to use it again, but I reuse mine. Like if I were going to do a top crust, the pie I'm making today doesn't need a top crust, so I won't be, but um, anyway, FYI, you can totally reuse your wax paper. Okay, so it's in there. Now I'm just bringing it down. You kind of loosen the edge and then make sure that it's touching the sides and the bottom and you get it in the sort of the corner of the pie plate so it's not suspended, if that makes any sense. You want to get it down in there, otherwise it's going to bake unevenly or puff or you're not going to be able to get as much filling in and that's no good. Okay, so I just kind of patted her in and it looks good. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Okay, now depending on what kind of pie you're making is going to depend on what you do next. The pie that I'm making today um, just needs the bottom crust and I don't need to um, blind bake or pre-bake the crust because um, everything can cook together. Some pies like a, that have a chilled custard filling or whatnot, you need to bake the, the crust first otherwise it won't be cooked. Um, but we don't need to do that today. So I'm just going to use my fork that I have been using and I'm just going to trim off some of the excess. Do -do -do -do. Cause we need a little bit of overhang. We don't need a ton. And another tip I'll give you, at least with this pie crust is that when you have assembled your pie and it's crimped or fluted or whatever you like to do to the edge, you don't want any of the crust to be hanging over the edge. Any crust business has to be inside the, the upper rim of the pie plate. If it is hanging over the edge, it's going to burn. I promise you, it's going to burn. Even if you use a pie crust shield, there's just too much heat coming in all directions if it's hanging over. So don't let it hang over the side. All right. That's about good. So
So for this uh, pie, I'm making a blueberry sour cream pie, by the way. It's one of our favorites, um, which I'm not going to show you how to make the filling today. Maybe we'll do that another day. Uh, this is just the crust. But for that, I'm going to employ um, my grandmother's favorite um, crust finishing technique, and that was always to press it with the tines of a fork. So I'm just going to fold this under a little bit, about a ton, just to make a more even ridge around the outside. So I'm just taking that top um, or that outer edge and I'm just kind of folding it under. I don't have a ton to fold under right in that spot. That's fine. It doesn't matter. And again, this is just how I do it. I'm not trying to say that your Aunt Isabel does it wrong. But I really do hope that you try this pie crust because it tastes good. The texture is, is really good. And it's really easy. Okay, so I'm just folding it under, folding it under. I'm going to make it even all the way around. There, we did it. Okay, so for this technique, the old fork technique, I'm just going to take this and press it down. And as I press down just a little bit, I drag it ever so slightly away from the center of the pie. And you just keep going around, push the tines in, and just a little bit outwards with that fork. As you can see this method doesn't take very long. We just push, push, push. There. Now, we're not done. Um, I mean, we could be done, but my sort of OCD sensibilities, I then go back in, and you can use the um, sort of that butt edge of the fork and I'm just gonna push any little edges that might be hanging over a little bit on the on the outside because remember I just told you you don't want to hang it over the edge because it's gonna burn so I'm just using that rounded part of the base of the fork and I'm just gently tapping it in so we're not hanging over is ready to go. So for today's pie, I put my filling in and it all bakes together. It has a little crumble topping on top um, and it's so tasty. But um, if we were going to blind bake or pre-bake this crust, there are some other methods that we would need to use before we do that. I won't get into that today, maybe another time. We'll do another pie video. You know I would love that. So I hope that you give this pie crust recipe a try. It is my favorite. Um, let me know in the comments um, if you try it and you like it, um, or let me know what your favorite pie crust recipe is and why. Where did it come from? Is it your grandma's? Did you make it up yourself? Um, or do you use different crusts for different pies that you're making? Because um, that might be the case too. So thanks so much for tuning in. I'm so glad that you found me. I'm Matthew. Have a great day. I'll see you back here again soon. Bye.